Gene, um, owner and founder of Pipe Jeans, um, uh, a residence of Brooklyn, Van Island, New Jersey. Hi, I'm Leanne. I live in Harlem, um, and I'm a doctor, specifically a psychiatrist. All right, I'm LeVon. I live in Brooklyn, originally from Jamaica. I'm a writer and also I do sales development. Emily, and I'm Haitian and I'm from Brooklyn. Um, you can check me out, Emily Elise, on Instagram and YouTube. My name is Ken, also known as Really Doe. I am an artist slash pharmacist. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm here for a current situation. I'm here to support my cousin. I'm excited. And I'm Lonnie, uh, born and raised in Brooklyn, uh, freelance graphic designer, occasional photographer, and every Friday I throw a pretty cool party called the Weekend Warm-Up that everybody should come to from time to time. Oh. Oh. All right. All right. All right. That's where we're going next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So going back to that, you say it's important for like black children to see that kind of model, right? I actually think that's a good point. What I want to actually ask you is like, what's the deeper thing behind that? Do you think is I mean, think about like black history in America specifically. Black women have been like the caretakers of our race, you know what I'm saying? They have our backs as the black men, and you know, they're struggling behind the scenes and helping to make things run out, like run smoothly, run along. So it's always that glue that holds together. So I feel like maybe from that perspective, kind of looking into this, all right, we worked so hard for this, you know what I'm saying? To have this, this, this sense of equality and all that. Mm -hmm. And then you're just gonna just give that shit away. Is, is that kind of where it's coming from in terms of like, wanting that so bad to have that image that your kids would see? Yes and no. I'm not even really thinking about just the black mom per se as mm -hmm. the black family. family. Right. Because I'm going to go back to the LeBron thing. Like if we had more people like LeBron, Denzel and all that stuff and less people like Kanye and all these rappers saying that they want a red bone and all that stuff. Y'all are listening to that. And we don't know how impressionable you are to, to the point where you're like, yo, I really want to be like Kanye, I really need a Kim K, I really need a Kim K. And now you have a bunch of black boys thinking that that is what they're, they're supposed to get, you know what I mean? Like, Wu-Tang and all that shit back in the day, it was talking about people that live right up the block. So what would niggas date back then? Bitches that live right up the block. Well, all right, I, so, yeah. so let me rephrase that. Well, what would be the consequence if, let's say, that's what they hear right. and what's up and do that? What's, what's the, the consequence? Thing? The that's consequence is that they're changing the black family. Like, you mm -hmm. go and you get somebody else up outside your race. You want an Asian chick. You want chinky eyes. You want Ling Ling. You know what I mean? Now you have a Blasian uh, woman. You know what I mean? And now you're raising a son or a daughter that was raised by a woman who's from the Philippines right. or from Japan. Mm -hmm. How is she going to really prepare this? Right. She can't oh, impart the culture on them. Yeah, right. you got to do it now. And sometimes, you know, you don't know because you need your, your mother to tell you. You know what I mean? So that's what I kind of, it's very important. But it's very important to have both because if it's the opposite way and it's a black woman and she ch chooses an Asian man, mm -hmm. like she needs a black man to tell this boy how he going to live in the street just because he got chinky eyes, he's still dark skin. Right. How does Asian man gonna tell him what to do in the cops? This is, like, this, this is so hard because right. if I, if me and him didn't have so much, my ex-boyfriend has so much mm -hmm. problems fundamentally, I would have married him. He didn't want to ever get married. So it's hard for me because when I saw him, we we pulled each other and it was like some soul connection. I don't mean to get too like weird, no, that's good. but it's like I couldn't, we was met at a train station and I couldn't pull myself from him and we, our, like we, at that moment we we just that was like that was who I wanted mm -hmm. and I didn't see and so it's hard for me I would be it would be hard for me to be dating in a world like this where I want to date who I love and who I was gravitated to and it's it's sad that I, I would not be welcomed by my community I it's sad to me none of my friends ever told me they had a problem with it yeah. but it's sad like I would be sad for anybody that wanted to just right. be with who they wanted to Excellent. love because I get your point and it makes sense I get your point yeah the culture of it and that's why I asked you that question because it does get to the culture like, okay, who's gonna teach us to be, or even just impart the stories of our past and shit like that. I guess watered down with each generation. So if you allow that to happen, and I can get it, is that the gatekeeper like, okay, yeah, you gotta check this shit. But at the same time, it's like, at what point do you say, okay, well, is that gonna happen? I can't really do anything about it, I have to accept it. That's what I want. I want more girls to have that kind of attitude. So this is where I say I'm not militant enough. So like, I don't care. Like, I don't go on Twitter and lash out. I would anybody. never do that. No, this but I'm saying like- between my yeah. circle. Right, I'm not saying you. I'm saying like, girls with that mindset, why don't y'all just be like, I wonder why they don't just be like, if he don't want me, and they oh, yeah. and he don't want me, he can go. Why is it so much anger? That's but my question. But it's not good to not voice your disapproval because then it's gonna become okay. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that sometimes it's not okay for you to just 
always feel like it's it's okay to want to shun your black women by saying as soon as they get mad at you oh you nappy headed black bitch that's like that's the first thing you say that's <laughs> not okay black no matter what, what? what? Uh, she said something to him as in like oh this nigga french swear people care about him and then i guess he went on her profile yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he came back and said yo what's up with this nappy headed black bitch la la and a lot of the stuff and so on and so forth but in his that sense, french said it? yeah french said that and it, it was all over uh instagram and pe people was like reposting it but in his sense which i understand he was just saying it just to like to That's like this insulting. but but in his stature and to his limits and all that stuff, he shouldn't be coming out of his mouth to say that. Now, you, like, you know, you come in, you're influencing people. Why would you say something like that? And he explained to himself, like, yeah. Yo, I was, like, first off, my family's from Africa. You know, uh, my son is black. So, like, I just, I was angered by this lady that's coming at me. And I didn't even come at her. So, I just came at her in that type of sense and all that stuff. So, he said, I apologize. Y'all know I only... I only date black women. I have a whole catalog of dating black women and all that stuff. So it's yeah, it, it, it. yeah. like, why, why, okay, why is it that other races understand that there's a social responsibility to your race, right? Indians, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you, you don't really see an Indian dating outside their race. And if they do, yes, it's gonna be white, more than likely. Right. But they don't play that, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sick. So, and I think that, I think oh. that black women I can't say all because I've never dated outside my race, not on purpose or whatever the case may be. But I feel like black women understand that, whereas black men don't see that as an opportunity. How do you not see dating inside your race as an opportunity Let's and, be, and more as a weakness? I don't understand that. And white men ain't checking for the Indian man. White women ain't checking for the Indian dude. If a man doesn't want to cheat, like say I'm cheating, I'm a black man and I'm cheating by dating outside my race. But if white women are flocking to me, it's like easier to say yes, whereas an Indian, Asian, Nobody's checking for Asian. Nobody's no. I no offense. White but, people too. But not that many people are like those other races are not as fetishized as much as a, a black men with dark, especially with dark skin. They're not as fetishized. They're not as desirable to the to the white. Can't ignore the legacy of slavery, and I'm I'm one of the people who says really not. To, we should not harp on slavery, and it's done. It's gone. It, well, kind of mostly done and gone. And he's in the overt way. And I think that you know I don't like when we it's always say oh slavery. I don't I'm, I don't like that. But we still can't ignore the fact that there is a dynamic of black people thinking that white people are better than them, which was taught to us for several centuries. Let me tell you, I love my grandmother. The other day, I don't know, I was talking about 23 and me, because my grandmother in Jamaica, I'm kidding, declared she is not African. My grandmother has every feature from West Africa, <laughs> you know? And she's like, we don't come from Africa. And so, you know, she's two generations away and she's in Jamaica, but at the same time, I, I think, you know, she's able to verbalize that and say it in a very angry way. But there are a lot of us have that implicitly and unconsciously in our minds and you know, we act on it. And so that's why, you know, I think, you know, you love who you love, but the reason I think people get very upset and incensed and you may say that, well, you know, I think that one, that black and white couple's real love versus that one, I don't think it's real. I think he's just, or she's just trying to up her status or she's trying to deal with her inferiority complex is because we recognize that it's a particularly complicated relationship between black people and white people and when it gets to the level of sex and marriage and yeah, you know commingling comm mingling of genes children. children right miscegenation of the races we begin to think you know we begin to ask like well why are they together is it because you know this black woman is fed up of you know these you know niggas ain't shit black men right or you know is this white black guy with this white woman because he feels like she's a trophy or status symbol and I think that you don't get that so much with like a black woman dating an Asian woman or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the legacy of, of slavery and the fact that there is this social hierarchy but still between black people and white people. Yeah, and I feel like, um, like piggybacking off of that, because that's kind of where I'm going to touch on as well. If you think about like other groups, China, like the Asians, Indians, whatever the case may be, if you think about the history of America, as black people, we were the only group that was really systematically just broken apart. So the unity was systematic where they just spread us out, you know, in this, all these disparate places. And like literally they're using black guys as breeders to go to different plantations and stuff like that. So they destroyed the whole family unit and we've been slowly trying to rebuild ever since. So that's one point. But two, if you think about it, like Indians or other immigrants that might come here, they didn't have to really face that. I mean, it's nothing, no knock against them, but they're gonna, 
automatically be more, you know, together and have that sense of unity and that sense of community. You know what I'm saying? Let's kind of stick together more. Like you said, we have a very complicated history in America. I, I didn't, can't overlook that. I didn't have no sense of like, I needed to, like nationalism or I need to be with my race until I dated a black guy and his mom was like, well, I don't know why you came with this woman because the girl before that was this skin type or whatever, or she was Puerto Rican. He's like, you should have just stayed with that so we could have some good hair babies or whatever. <laughs> she said that to my face, a, um, a Jamaican woman, wow, you know, yeah. if you, if you, it just was like, so now I was just like, uh-uh. Now I'm about to hold on to him because <laughs> You know, your son, you need to face it. Your son likes black women and his his the celebrity crushes are all Naomi Campbell, black, 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 black. Grab her union, black, 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 black. black. His mom is black. That well, makes no sense to and me. they have issues with the bleaching of the skin and all this stuff. So it's like at that moment, I was like, dang, we fucked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't realize how fucked up we are until like your fake we're fucked up in our own communities. Mm -hmm. So you're right, we do need to like we have a lot of prep um, like reparation to do because mentally we don't think we're beautiful. We don't like our skin. We don't like our... So then I said to myself at that moment, I'm like, yo, if I have a baby with him, his, my baby's probably going to come out black and maybe blacker than me because blacker than the both of us together. And what is she going to do about it? Deal. We have to her. deal and love this baby. And I'm like, so then I said to myself at that moment, I'm like... I might, I just might have to end up with a black guy just because like, it, it just, it just was like, <laughs> I didn't realize how just messed up we are. <laughs> I was inspired. I was like, yo, we I mean, up. with other race walks around saying like, Indian is beautiful. Like we actually have to verbalize that black is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So I think that, you know, crazy, we, crazy. you know, we have, we don't, we had to be, we had to wait to be told that butts are good looking. We had to wait to be told that our lips were sexy. We had to, well, not that I have them, but you know, you have to wait to be told all sorts of things, right? Until we kind of started to accept ourselves and then we're still kind of then trying to look like a caricature of the perfect black woman getting plastic so surgery much. to look a particular way. And so, you know, I think it's, when we talk about interracial dating, I think most people are thinking black, white even though obviously there are other combinations yeah. but that's the one i think that gets the most drama yeah, black woman, that, because of our history because of our complicated history I mean, also you could blame it um media as well too you know mm -hmm. where they promote the lighter skin or white onto the you know magazines tv commercials when you go to commercials like I guarantee you 95 percent of the commercials there'll be that white person there you might see like you know a black commercial, you know, you'll see that McDonald's, you know, or Gap commercial a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but like most of the time was being played over and over. But the, the black person they do have would be the biracial. Yeah. That would represent yeah. us. No, 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 no. I see commercial now. Like the black is different. Yeah. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, that was a lot of black. Yeah, and she's yeah. natural. You yeah, she always has natural hair. So history does play a part because in the, in the white culture or Caucasian, like, they all go, the epitome of beauty is white hair, blonde hair, blue eyes. And ma does that come from the history of, you know what I'm saying? Like the Holocaust and all that, and they were trying to get rid of one. So like, we have the same thing going on. No, not trying to put them on the same level, but it's like history does really affect our conscious and how we, how we perceive beauty and, 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 and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, that's a good point, because you think about this in white culture. Blonde hair, blue eyes is like the thing. The thing. Just like in black culture, sometimes light skin is the thing. Like kind of going back to what you're saying about um, like the imagery and all that. Yeah. You think of yeah. why we love LeBron. Yeah. Like say he's with his same girlfriend from like high school and she's mm -hmm. black. She's a, not a regular black woman, but she's a black woman, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Right. If you notice when Steph Curry kind of got on and got big, mm -hmm. they were hyping him up a lot and it's mostly because of colorism. Because yeah. that they say, oh, she that looks like an ideal. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that I mean, sure they have like the both Christian and all that yeah. good stuff, so that's, that's good too. But they looked at that as an ideal black family. That was. That's that what was. we want the NBA to represent. That's what they try to push him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's, there's also other, you know, components to Steph thing too. You know, he's like a highly religious person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you got <laughs> this mm -hmm. light-skinned black guy, plus he's highly religious. It plays to a larger base of, you the know, white like, like consumers or whatever. This is perfect. And he has a cute daughter that's really funny. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, it's really his girl is like really concerned when she says she wants to cover up 
Yeah, and she. But she also has blue eyes. Yeah, yeah like a picture perfect know. family. She, yeah. you know, she won the eye lottery. Exactly. <laughs> so going back to what you're saying, like if I was to have a baby with a with a, um a white man, then it's like if I have two kids, one comes out with more black features, and then that one doesn't. People are comparing my kids. It's a lot of confusion. Yeah. And we already have that. I have that in my family. Mm -hmm. Just that my sister has slightly softer hair. You know, people would say she's her hair was better. I was in an Uber a while ago, um, headed to uh, my friend's baby shower. Him and his wife are having their fifth kid. And <laughs> the, uh, the driver's Indian. He said, you know, Americans have it messed up. He said, you guys marry for love. And that mm -hmm. stuff is only temporary. That's why we have arranged <laughs> marriages. And he was like, dead serious. Mm -hmm. So he and his wife, he said, you know, I really respect my wife. She's great. And she's the reason why my kids have gone as far as they have. So I think two of his kids were doctors and one was like an engineer. And he's done that all by driving cab, but they were arranged marriage and they were working on arranged marriages for their children. So he's like, you know, love is overrated. Yeah. Where we're, we're trying to be like a, a good family of like practical people that, that do great things because for the, for the most part, we're here to reproduce and make our children better for future generations. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that's what they're thinking. That's our whole basis. I'm not a that's our whole basis of our, like right now the, the LGBT culture is getting pushed because they're bringing up love. And so like for us to just take love out of the equation would be too I'm, hard I'm not saying point. to eliminate it, but I don't think they prioritize right, it. That's right. Right. Oh, okay. And then the other thing is for, for interracial dating, we, we ignore um, geography. So I got a friend that lives, well, he works for Border Patrol. He lives right by the border of Mexico. Chances are not too many black women down there, so he's dating a Mexican girl. <laughs> Is that that's true. Program? That's true. If you live in North Dakota yeah. and you have a white woman, I'm not gonna really. I ain't gonna be I, mad. It's not too many Serena's running around. Yeah, like, all, I all like, my cousins from in Connecticut are dating white. Op, there's black all of them are dating black white people. people. Every single one of my cousins <laughs> yeah, in Connecticut. Well, I mean, he's like in the ass crack. There's more than enough for him to find somebody with y'all. All right, we're gonna take a break. Thank you.